Welcome to the Lawyers of Tomorrow podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Turner. The Lawyers of Tomorrow podcast is dedicated to helping lawyers put their clients at the centre of everything that they do. Each week, I interview visionaries who are working to build a modern, efficient legal sector that delivers valuable, easily accessible and easy to use legal products and services that meet clients' needs. The focus of this show is on how lawyers can provide the best possible solutions for their clients by embracing things like legal project management, new technology, innovative models, including automated solutions, and by acquiring new skills. During each show, we give listeners practical strategies and tools that they can implement immediately in their legal practice. Today's podcast is about empowering lawyers by helping them acquire skills for the new challenges and new solutions that they need to deliver to clients. And so to my guest, Jean-Luc Deli. Jean-Luc is the founder of Innovation.Law, the legal industry forum promoting discussion and innovation within the legal, se- within the legal sector. He's also the managing director of Lawbility, which offers practical skills training for legal professionals. He's also the board mem- a board member of the International Negotiation Competition for, for Law Students. And he's an educationalist. And Jean-Luc believes that there are great opportunities for lawyers in the future but we have to sit in the driver's seat and start building for the future of the profession now. Jean-Luc, welcome to Lawyers of Tomorrow. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for the invitation. Great to have you here. You know, I was thinking, uh, you told me the story uh, in one of your emails that what you like to do is as you're cycling to work in the morning, you see yourself as being an entrepreneur and in the driving seat, exposing yourself to new challenges. I think it's a lovely metaphor. And I was wondering, I asked my last guest on the podcast this, and it's equally relevant to you. Do you think there's ever been a better time to be an entrepreneurial lawyer? Well, there are definitely a lot of opportunities today, but um, we're also facing it as a challenge. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a fascinating time. Um, but but definitely also not an easy time. Let's face it. Uh, there are complex problems coming, um, and um, I, I think it, it it needs really uh, an entrepreneurial spirit to to face those challenges in a way that that we can come up with solutions. But it's it's truly fascinating, as you say. Yeah, I say the same things to my students. Some of them say oh, we're all going to be put out of work by the robots. And I said, well, it's definitely going to have an impact on lawyers, but I think it's going to have an impact on everybody. And I say to them that there are so many opportunities now compared to when I qualified in the 90s. It was pretty much you you either work for a law firm or there was then the possibility of uh, working uh, in-house. But I think now there are so many different ways to go. So I think uh, it's a little bit more scary for them, but I think also there's there's great opportunities. Well, absolutely. I think what we have to understand is um, that it's not just the legal sector that is changing, but that it's a really fundamental change in the society and in the markets happening right now as we are speaking. Um, and different new circumstances make the, the different professions, um, just in, in, put in a new, in a new situation. So I think it's, it's, we are talking about the new normal, about how is the new society, how is the new economy going to work in the future? And how can I, as a lawyer, deliver my service? Um, and being part of that, that markets, and what is my role as a lawyer, and and redefining those uh, fundamental um, elements is 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 a requirement to then be able to 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 be a service provider in in uh, in those markets. That's interesting. You mentioned the new normal. How do you see? First of all, the new normal uh, developing safer society, and then how does that relate to, say, the new normal for lawyers? Well, obviously, we talk here about something which hasn't arrived yet and will probably never arrive because because we're talking about the future. Um, and and it hasn't um, maybe is not clear enough yet as as to help 
the legal service providers to 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 meet the requirements of of, um, of the markets, but we can see new circumstances indicating the directions into um, which we are going. Um, it's sometimes reduced to what is called legal tech um, is is probably narrowing down what what um, the future is going to be like obviously technology is going to have a very important impact in the new legal service and and legal market but it's by itself, not um, the, the the whole the whole story. Um, I think when cars were invented, for instance, not every person became a mechanic. The new technology will not make all lawyers, hence um, IT specialists. So I think that the, the, the a better understanding of the picture is really to 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 try to to define the circumstances that will influence the the market and that will have an impact on the profession of the lawyers with innovation law we defined the future to be first of all digital the digitalization of legal services second transformed which we mean self transformation of legal businesses and innovative which means adapting the solutions to the needs of the clients and this is not only true for legal services, but also for the legal education that is preparing the candidates for being service providers in the legal market. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Well, I'd like to pick up on uh, legal education specifically a little bit later on. But you've introduced Innovation.Law, the Legal Industry Forum. Can I just backtrack a little bit there and um, ask you, why did you decide to set up innovation.law and what were your key goals that you wanted to achieve through this? Well, as an educationalist, it's always important to understand what the future is going to be like as to develop and adapt our programs to the future, to the needs of the candidates and, and the market in the future. So um, I was very interested in, in seeing the transformation of, of the legal market and um, found it very relevant that there is a platform for lawyers to discuss that new future and to debate because I see lawyers in the responsibility to take action and to decide today what kind of services they are going to provide in the future. It's not about technology entering in, in, in the legal market only, but it's also and very much about self-transformation of the legal market and I found the discussion um, here at least on the European continent to be driven by technology so innovation law wanted to be a platform for lawyers legal professionals talking about the self-transformation of the legal industry and inspiring the lawyers to become entrepreneurs with innovation and transformation to create new businesses and new services and products as they will be needed in the future. Yeah, that's 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 excellent because that's exactly what I've got in mind with Lawyers of Tomorrow. And I think I agree with you that often we can get a little bit uh, geeky when it comes to the technology. I mean, I love technology as much as the next person. So uh, I can really get into using a new platform. But I think sometimes we can lose sight of the fact that what we're doing is much as Jordan Furlong would say, you're sticking the client at the center of everything that you do and then you're innovating to the extent that it then provides a better solution for the client. And if that means that it's a piece of technology that is the solution, then all well and good. But if in fact it means that you've just got to sharpen your practice up by better systems, perhaps some legal project management, then that's the form of solution that you uh, that you have to go for. Well, uh, yeah, I, I can just agree with it. it's 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 very much about re- discussing about the new role of the lawyer in in the legal industry if 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 i may stephen i don't know um to go into that topic already but it's sure, the, sure. the role of a lawyer um is going to change 
um, and we have to understand this um, as to to better be able to to then deliver a service. For instance, um, becoming a service provider in an interdisciplinary team of experts is a very important skill um, a lawyer will will need in 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 such a new setting, to be able to work collaboratively with other experts and develop services that are solution oriented, and I think that makes the law the legal profession more creative, allowing the lawyer to de develop concepts and strategies, maybe a skill which hasn't been that much um, trained, developed and used in the past, but is probably going to be a core skill in, in the future legal profession. Yes, I agree. I agree. And I think one of the topics that I picked up on looking through your innovation uh, dot law brochure from the event that you did in Zurich. One of the uh, topics that was picked up was, uh, that was particular of particular interest uh, to me was uh, the improved customer experience with yogurt. Now I don't know what yogurt was. It looked like it was the name of a company there. But I think the idea of the talk was that we're talking about legal design. The idea of lawyers focusing with other business business professionals and really thinking about how their they interact with their clients from a, a holistic point of view, business, the experience that the clients have, and even how the clients interact with any legal products or legal services that they that, that, that the law firm produces. Could you tell me a little bit about that 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 aspect, the aspect of legal design within a business context? Well, it, it's 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 absolutely fascinating to see that a, that a lawyer can can have. A more important role um, than just applying the law um, in in to 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 a specific project, um, but becoming really a, a strategic player, um, measuring the, the market, understanding the, the the client and 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 the business, um, so so that the contribution given by the lawyer is really contributing to the product itself or to the project. Um, so, so it comes back to what I said before, um, creating ideas, concepts, strategies that are measured by the market on one side and developed in an interdisciplinary team of experts with with bringing in different know-how um, and, and diversity is, is probably something that, that allows us to, to really um, achieve those high-performance um, teams uh, in the market that are needed to, to, to create the, 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 the new products as, as, as needed by the clients. Yeah, I agree. Uh, since we've uh, we had the Legal Services Act over here uh, in the UK, it's allowed us to have those multidisciplinary practices. So um, alternative business structures is one way that we refer to them. So you get business professionals, marketing professionals that, and, it, and now increasingly technology professionals getting into uh, arrangements with law firms or lawyers and then producing exactly that uh, decent s solutions for for clients, do you find in your jurisdiction as well there's been a loosening of uh, regulation to allow that to happen, or what, what's the situation? Have you always had the ability to do that? Because I know over in America they've still got restrictions that really do limit their ability to do what we now in the UK can do freely. Well, absolutely. If you look at the European continent, you, you see that um, those trends and, and events are coming as well in, in the different uh, countries um, as they already exist in the United States and uh, in the United Kingdom, um, but definitely not as far developed as, as they are um, uh, in your countries. So it's um, it, it's something that, that is, is probably seen with a little bit more relu reluctancy and and uh, probably the markets are not totally ready yet, um, but it's it's definitely going into that direction that there are business opportunities for such structures. 
Super. Thanks very much for that. Um, we've talked about the changing role of the lawyer over the next five to 10 years. How, in your view, how well prepared do you think that practicing lawyers are for the coming changes? Well, well, that's <laughs> that's a, a very good question um, and and um, difficult to answer. I I don't know if we can first of all draw a timeline f for for those changes to, to happen. Um, it's difficult to say. It's a very complex situation and depends on different factors, obviously. Um, but it's very likely, um, as we can see from the circumstances, that we are. Um, going into that direction that there are going to be fundamental changes in the markets um, and and uh, lawyers uh, will have to adapt to new situations. I'm optimistic, as you said in the very beginning. Um, I see um, the, the legal market as a market that is maybe a little bit conservative, but at the same time um, seems there seems trends um, to show that there is flexibility, uh, agility as well to, to adapt to those trends once the needs turn up. I think at the moment the legal market is still in a safe situation um, that um, businesses are running well and maybe the needs are not in some parts are not so uh, big already to, um, to be turned into action. But um, but definitely, um, one has to have a mindset um, of change and be willing to 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 adapt to those new needs um, when when the time is coming. And probably it's it's now an interesting time to be a first mover and to use that situation to be to become maybe even a, a leader in in some developments um, um, as they they will they will turn up. Absolutely. I agree. Um, I think it's about about a mindset. I mean, that's one of the reasons I set up Lawyers of Tomorrow. The idea is, who am I reaching out to? It's that the sort of lawyer that is within a practice. Uh, they they could be a leader within the practice. They are of the mindset that we should be ready for the changes that come are coming along. And we should be thinking about how we can deliver better services. So let's imagine we are one of those lawyers within a law firm who is aware that there are changes coming, but there's also they're also aware that there's great opportunities. What advice would you have for such a lawyer on how they can prepare themselves for the changes that can come along, for the opportunities? And are there any tools that you could point that lawyer towards uh, which would enable them to, uh, to, to work on that preparation? Well, if the profession is changing as fundamental as some experts say, um, it's obvious that the, the, the current generation, the, the legal professionals have learned a profession that is very likely not going to exist anymore in the future. So a new skill set is is required, and 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 I do believe that that there is a, a great opportunity for those who understand that and and are willing to 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 set up a, a, an innovative strategy to say um, they are going to to manage innovation in the law firm. Obviously, they learned to to manage know how to know the law and to control risks and in the future um, maybe in an opposite direction they will have to create innovation and manage innovation for themselves as a business but also for for the clients so i do think that that law firms um, that create a project team um, trying to 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 really develop their business into new business areas and and to to allow innovation among their employees um, are in a better position to to be ready um, for for new ideas and, and and new concepts that that will be maybe the the, the new concepts of the market yeah I agree I think having an innovation team some sort of uh, setup where you are looking at 
within the whole practice, new ways of doing things. And I think that can include legal project management, uh, agile and lean, looking at the way the systems uh, that you do, that, that you operate, and also reaching out to all the people in the firm. Uh, it could be new new people coming in, the young associates, uh, saying to them, "Look, we're looking for any possible innovations that you, that, that you're looking at here, that, that you're interested in as well, and having some sort of a, a process for dealing with those." Um, can I talk to you now about uh, your uh, your new uh, setup, which you've got with Lawbility? Uh, can you tell me something about that? Because that focuses on skills. Um, how did you come to to come up with the idea for lawability, and what are your what are you looking to do with that? Say over the next few years. Well, the the the, the starting point was was the professional legal English language, which was obviously on the European continent and and here in in Zurich. Um, not a first language, um, as, as, as you use it in the, in the United States or in the United Kingdom. So, um, it was obviously used as a professional language, but, but obviously not by natives. So I, I could see that there is a, a huge need of, of training and developing those skills as to help lawyers to demonstrate their lawability in, in the English language, in the international language of law, and was the beginning of a language program, but also a practical skills program, because it's not just about knowing the professional language and the legal terminology, but also its application in practical situations. So it became a training and coaching program um, that that allowed lawyers to to specifically learn those practical skills, which so far were not reflected in the legal education. And in the meantime, we, we provide this program in English and French and in German, and we have also developed new programs that have the same goals and, and objectives. Yeah, it's interesting that you're doing this now. And is, is a lot of it done by, uh, uh, done by a digital delivery? Um, on one side, yeah, we try, we try to go into that direction, but, um, it's, it's still, um, seen as a skills training. And I believe, um, for skills training, um, training and coaching as an approach to, to enable a candidate to develop their own skills and empower them with with the practical skills is still the right way to go. So we have a lot of small group classes um, in, um, in 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 the different programs, um, training lawyers, especially uh, and particularly in in those skills. Oh, it's wonderful that you're doing this. I have a personal experience of this. In 1996, I'd been qualified as a lawyer for nearly three years, and I'd always wanted to go into teaching. I had I used to sit at the back of my law college classes and not fantasize about being a lawyer, although I knew that was going to happen. I used to fantasize about being the teacher at the front. So in 96, I uh, did a TEFL certificate, and I moved to Barcelona, and I set up a communication training consultancy called Baker Turner Legal and Commercial English. And it did exactly what, what you're describing here. It was essentially doing language classes, but for lawyers. So I approached a lot of the big law firms in Barcelona, and I ended up teaching uh, a couple of, of uh, law firms there. And we did exactly what you're talking about. It was functional language. So you had people who were incredibly skilled in Spanish and Catalan. But when it came to doing the same sort of thing in English, they said, oh, I feel like I've had all my powers taken away. So we would do a lot of functional language meetings, certainly for uh, business people as well. I taught a, a sales department as well, and they were talking about how difficult it was to describe graphs and so forth. So I'm glad to know that the basics of the teaching haven't actually altered that much. So uh, I think that's great. great it's, it's wonderful, yeah, what you say. Um, and, and maybe to point out um, what what is very interesting is to see, and it's probably the different approach that we have here, is that legal English is a legal skill that is really taught by lawyers and not linguists only. 
um, as it's it's a lot about the concept behind uh, a legal term, and it's a lot about the practical application which we manage to 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 then include in our program. Um, and now you, as a as an English lawyer, might maybe think, why why would they do that on on the European continent, um, as it's it's not their first language? And it was maybe even an opportunity for us to have this approach, um, because we um, understood language um, not connected to the law, but as a mean to advise um, the law or to explain what the law means and um, being independent from 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 the legal system um, enabling lawyers in any jurisdiction to use the language um, as a mean of, of um, um, explaining what, what the law means yes exactly exactly um, and as far as future skills programs have you got anything that's likely to come online in the next year that you'd like to talk about well it's all early days now to think about what skill set um do lawyers and law firms need in the future um to meet the challenges um in, in the future um i i think it's a great opportunity to see the next generation um as a generation with a new skill set that will probably what you mentioned before help law firms to cover that gap of 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 skills which which maybe currently is is not available um and, and to allow diversity to bring in new skills that are not able um, in uh, that are not available in, in 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 their own firm at the moment. So we are thinking about uh, a program that 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 really covers those those different um, the different areas. Um, it's definitely going into a T-shaped skill set. Um, where lawyers learn how to master um, the, the the profession and new opportunities, um, and and comes back to what we were saying before. Um, lawyers have to are at the moment the way they are trained probably rather know how managers and skills controllers, but have in the future projects they're working on um, are going to to require from them to be legal service providers legal service designers um, analytical skills probably entrepreneurial skills innovative skills so it's it's a program that that will have to 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 help lawyers to develop those skills um, and to learn them and 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 and, and further develop that uh, during during their their career it's probably the understanding is important that it's not possible to learn something for the future and then you're set it's probably very much going to be the future is changing and 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 um, to have this understanding to have the the, the competency to to adapt to, to new situations is is what lawyers will need. So it's 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 a very interesting set, um, time actually now to think about that, and we are trying to reach out to to partners, other institutions, and and see if if there is um, possibility to create synergies and and um, and and develop something together because. For sure, this is something not happening only in one market or one place, but is is really something that is um, having an impact on on probably worldwide um, happening in the legal profession. So, so uh, an international approach is probably even desirable in 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 such a uh, a situation to to create a new standard um, of of the legal profession and the legal service. Absolutely. I think I, I think that's correct. And this is stuff that I've talked about in my article that I wrote for Legal Trek about a year ago on redesigning legal education. I think that's how you uh, I think you read that. And that's how you found me and how we're now having this podcast. And in that I talk about uh, from a legal education point of view, I talk about soft skills. It's an area that I think has been 
Um, I think that law firms soft pedal on soft skills. And I certainly I think that uh, training institutions, certainly in the UK, don't dedicate enough time to development of soft skills. What's your take on that? Do you agree or do you have a different perspective? Uh, well, absolutely, I agree um, from from my experience. But but maybe to go back to 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 the time I was a student, I learned law being something like a problem with a solution. And then later on, uh, when I started my uh, my legal career, I became part of the international law student competitions. And I had to change my view on that and to find out um, the beauty of a totally new concept, client-centered approach, um, seeing the client as a human being or a business um, that needs a tailor-made solution and meeting the interests of the clients. Um, and, and I find this a wonderful, wonderful concept that, that gives me a better understanding of, of how we can train uh, law students and young lawyers for, for meeting those, those um, um, challenges of the future. If the, the client has more and more specific needs and, and new projects that have not come up in the past, lawyers will even more have to, to listen to the client's listening skills, um, interest-oriented um, analytical skills, um, developing projects in, in an interdisciplinary team with the client together, um, trying to develop solutions. So that is a very important part um, that, that will be important in the future um, when, when lawyers are in the profession, communicating with each other and whether that is now project process and project management, um, whether that is in in uh, in technology, it's it's always going to be about communication, and I think um, that will make um, high performance teams and that will develop efficient work um, if people are able to communicate effectively um, together. Yeah. I think uh, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. From my point of view, uh, emotional intelligence and empathy is something that I say to my students all the time. You really, we were talking yesterday about uh, drafting letters to the client. And I said, look, all four tables, you're all interfacing with this from the point of view of lawyers analyzing the client situation. Now go around the other side and look at it from the client situation. What's keeping them awake at three o'clock in the morning? And they all stopped and had to, I said, actually imagine it, empathize, imagine you're this client. And they said, yeah, the process of doing that is a complete readjustment. So I think focusing on emotional intelligence, empathizing, and and this links with marketing as well. We did a podcast the other week all about legal marketing, and it's all about doing empathy maps, really focusing for a good two or three hours on exactly what your clients feel, what problems are they having, and then empathizing with them as they go through the process of interacting with your law firm deal with your the people all the different touch points working out exactly how does the client feel about their own problem about how we're relating to them about that so i think emotional intelligence and empathy is is at the heart of that i think it's a key skill and i don't think it's one that at the moment uh, law firms dedicate enough attention to <laughs> Wonderful, Stephen. That that is is uh, is something really I can just echo, um, and I think is is um, is part of this T-shaped skill set um, of a lawyer to to be able to adapt to the different situations in 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 practice. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about this? Let's move on to you touched upon uh, competitions. You're involved in international law student competitions. Can you tell me a little bit about those? What, um, uh, first of all, who can take part in them and uh, what uh, skill sets are you developing through these competitions? Um, well, yeah, absolutely. Um, th- those are two international law student competitions um, focusing on client consultation and client interviewing on one side and legal negotiation on the other side. And the beauty about those programs that are 
purely educational programs is that on the national level, um, students are trained um, in those skills and participate in national programs and national competitions. And the winners then get the opportunity to compete with each other on the international level. And by doing so, learning from experts, being in the jury, receiving a feedback, um, receiving comments from an outside perspective on how in legal practice um, problems would be solved um, differently. So really getting the experience um, on their own by interviewing a client acting um, an actor as a, acting as a client or by negotiating with another team of students um, a contract or a transaction enables them to to really apply the law and to understand it in a business context which is a, an experiential learning which is a practical learning and um, i think this kind this method of, of of teaching and of education um has a great impact on 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 students and and helps them to understand much better than than purely limiting um um know-how transfer um to 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 theory and um, when it's applied in 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 a situation um where they can see what impact it has on a client where they have to advise legal and non-legal um elements and especially including that in in at the level of legal education shows to me that it has a great impact um, to students experiencing that kind of situations during their studies. Absolutely, absolutely. And when do these uh, negotiation and uh, other competitions run from? Do they run all, all year round or um, at different times of the year? Well, that depends. Um, in every country, that's different. Um, every country has an autonomous program, uh, uh, a, a national competition, and and that has to be found out um, with with the national um, representatives in 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 each country. Um, but um, is 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 all online um, on on the web pages of of those uh, law student competitions. So is 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 definitely something I I can only um, recommend to to students to um, become part of of those programs. And whether it's those student competitions or another program, but just experiential learning is is a very interesting experience during their legal studies. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Um, right. Well, we're coming up, I think, to the end of our time here. What I like to do at the end of a podcast is I like to fo focus a little bit on uh, the person who is at the other end of, in this case, an Internet connection. And Jean-Luc, what I'd like you to do is imagine you are now on the telephone to your 20 year old self. What advice would you give to the now 20 year old Jean-Luc? <laughs> Well, that's a very interesting question. Um, I well, I I learned a lot from from experience, probably um, through through my my entrepreneurial spirit I had, um, launched my own business and 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 had a very strong vision in 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 what I was doing. Um, establishing a professional legal skills training institution um, and was very creative and, and, and tried out and, and learned from experience, learned also from failure, definitely. Um, so probably, you know, um, uh, um, coming back to your question as an old man, uh, giving an advice to, 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 to a young student, I, I would probably say focus, focus a little bit more and, 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 and stick with something specific, um, and, and, and try to, to, to do that, um, um, with excellence, um, and, and, uh, um, learn from that experience I, but it's it's always easier to to say that uh, after you experienced um already on, on by yourself 
and what inspires you? Well, my, my personal motivation is to see the great potential of, of the young generation and to enable them to use their potential and empower them with the skills they need. I think the biggest challenge of the legal industry today um, is how to prepare the next generation for the new opportunities and to make the legal profession appealing to the next generation and attractive. I sometimes think it's, it's, it's easy to say the future will probably not be as attractive anymore. We don't need that many lawyers anymore in the legal market and technology will replace um, the, the legal professionals. Um, even if part of that might be true, um, I think as an educationalist, but also just as a member of the legal industry, it's important for me to, to look at the legal profession and to make this attractive and appealing to, to law students or to the next generation um, interested in becoming part of that. So to, to show them the path, to, to help them to find a passion and a vision for, for that, for that profession um, is, is to me very important. It would be a pity to lose talents um, just because the, 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 the career path is not as, tra as, as easy um, as it was maybe in the past, because I think there are opportunities um, in the profession and the profession and the, the legal market need talents to, to solve the problems of the future. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And on that very positive note, I think uh, we will draw this to a close. Uh, Jean-Luc, that's been wonderful. How can people uh, contact you either through innovation.law or lawability? Do you have a couple of uh, email addresses? Well, absolutely. They're all online on lawability.com and on innovation.law. Um, it's easy to get in touch with us if people are interested in cooperating or getting services specifically in those areas, I'm very happy and, and available to discuss that on a one-on-one -on -one, um, discussion with, with, with people interested. Well, thank you very much. Well, look, John, can I just ex acknowledge that, that has, this has been a wonderful 45 minutes. I really love speaking to another educator, or edu I like the way you refer to it, educationalist, who, uh, who's, in, who's is enthusiastic and uh, really into the idea of teaching and seeing the possibilities as you are. I find when I walk out of a class sometimes, when it goes really well, I fly out of the class, and it's wonderful. So it's great to speak with someone who has that same passion and I wish you well in all that you're doing with innovation uh, dot law and uh, with lawability. And I've got a got an idea. You reached out to me a while ago. I've definitely got an idea that I'm going to approach you with for how we can help to educate our youngsters, certainly with the uh, with the use of the technology. So I will be in touch about that. Well, thank you very much for your time today and I wish you well having a great rest of the day Thank you Stephen it's been a great pleasure um, being here in, 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 in that podcast with you I'm very honoured uh, for your invitation and uh, a wonderful discussion and I think it's exactly those discussions that help us selves to, to understand uh, what we're doing and how to make it better uh, for the future so um, it has been lovely talking with you and uh, thank you so much for, for the initiative. It's, it's a great program you've run and um, I wish you success with, with all that and hope uh, um, you will have a great impact on that. Well, thank you very much. And listeners, well, that is the end of our podcast. Uh, today. Uh, if you have any questions for me, then you can contact me at Stephen, spelt with a PH, uh, Stephen at lawyersoftomorrow.com. Have a great day. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.